Hey, we've had some break-ins in my neighborhood, and there's a real suspicious guy. He just said he shot him down. It's the person who's dead laying on the ground. No justice, no peace. No justice, no peace. Are you following them? Yeah, okay, we don't need you to do that. Mr. Zimmerman has made the statement of self-defense. But neighborhood watch is neighborhood watch, not neighborhood shoot. What do you see when you, you look face to face across to Mr. Zimmerman? Very, very frightened 28-year-old. He was very sorry for where things were. It was February 26th in Sanford, Florida, a night that really changed the nation and sparked a huge uproar. This young man had just bought Skittles and iced tea at the local 7-Eleven and was headed back to his dad's home in this gated community when George Zimmerman, the neighborhood watch volunteer following him, ends up shooting him dead. Now, of course, we all know about the national uproar that followed first he was not arrested, George Zimmerman, that is. And then ultimately, after a, a national uproar, demonstrations, and an investigation by a special prosecutor, he was arrested. There you see George Zimmerman being uh, taken in by police. Well, now we've got extraordinary new 911 calls just in. Now, the first one comes the day after the shooting. Believe it or not, Trayvon Martin's dad had no idea that his 17-year-old son had been shot dead because the young man did not have identification on him when he went to the 7-Eleven. So the next day, which would be February 27th, Trayvon Martin's father, Tracy Martin, is calling 911 to try and file a missing persons report. Where is his son? He has no idea. Let's listen to the 911 call that just came into our system, you and I together hearing it for the first time. Seminole County Sheriff's Office, this line is being recorded. My name is Cassandra. How are you? Good, how are you today, sir? Good, good, good. Um, I don't know if I need to file a missing person report. Because <clears throat> um, it hasn't really been 24 hours. Um, but but um, I'm from Miami, and my son's up here with me, and he left. Uh, he done, I'm in Sanford. He don't. We don't know anybody up here, and okay. And I haven't. So, are you staying seen, at a hotel here? No, I'm. I'm actually staying at um, a girlfriend's house. My okay, girlfriend's do, you know, house. do you know the address? What's the address, baby? Okay. And you said it was your son that's missing. Yes. Give me one moment. And you said, how long has he been missing for? Since last night. <clears throat> how old is your son? He's 17. Okay, what's his name? Trayvon Martin, T-R-A-Y-V-O-N-M-A-R-T-I-N. Okay, sir, what's your name? My name is Tracy Martin. Okay, what's the phone number we can reach you at? Okay, sir, and your officer can meet with you and file the report? Yes. Okay. What was your son last seen wearing? Um, I'll say he probably had on a, a pair of uh, khaki shorts uh, and a gray sweatshirt. Um, probably got on, he probably has on slides. Uh, uh, and a pair of, I'm sorry, and a pair of Jordan tennis shoes. White and red tennis shoes. Okay. Okay, sir. Can you give me a specific time of the last time you saw him? Uh, around 8.30. 8.30? Yeah, 8, 8.30 last night, yes. Okay, sir, we're going to dispatch somebody out there. Okay, thank you. All right, yes, sir. Bye. The extraordinary thing is that police the night that Trayvon lay dead on the ground did not walk around to a nearby unit where the father lived and ask him, hey, uh, is this your son? <laughs>